the fuck is McClay? This is the podcast. Ep- you know what? Where's the marker at? <laughs> <laughs> That's why we have this motherfucker. The podcast, episode eight, Little Mac, take three. <laughs> the podcast. That's recording, right? Episode eight, Little Mac. Make sure it's in front. Take, take three. Awesome. Action, motherfuckers. Okay, this is the podcast episode eight, take three, like uh, the slate says. So twice I've had audio issues, so I'm going to be even extra paranoid uh, looking over here constantly. But anyway, um, do you want to explain your jersey again, McClay? You don't think that you don't think that um, <laughs> you don't think that you have it on the first two. <laughs> I'm not gonna splice it together. I think we already got it. Actually. Go Pats! <laughs> no, please wait, talk wait, wait. about it again. Sh- wait, shout out to Leaf Nation. Yeah, Leaf Nation. <laughs> yeah. Shout out to Leaf Nation for the third time. Go Leaf Nation! <sighs> Who plays for again? Matthew. Why did? You, why aren't you wearing it on St. Patrick's Day? <laughs> Hopefully, Austin Matthews gets you guys a cup. <laughs> okay. So aggressive. I'm sorry. Hopefully okay. get you a cup. <laughs> so this is the third time we've shot the intro. I've already said that. So that's it's not funny to anybody else but us. Anyway, he's had to explain this uh Kevin Smith jersey three times now. Fucking <laughs> Kevin Smith. Um so the, the, the Toronto Maple Leafs Silent Brian. The Toronto Maple Leafs, uh one of the team that, that originally played in Toronto back in like nineteen ten or something was called the uh, Toronto St. Pat's. And um, every uh, St. Patrick's Day, um, the Maple Leafs will will put on these jerseys for like three games or so. So, um, shit, the audience. <laughs> God damn it! If I give you I'm, just, I'm just fucking. I'm gonna go smoke a I was pretty good. Oh, even Don Rizzo got up. Look, he's fed up. He's fucking out the door. He don't even know you were kidding. He was going so fast. <laughs> so uh, you know what? Hey, maybe it's episode. It's take three, but it's giving you good content. Jesus Christ. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, do you, can you explain it for the third time? <laughs> so hold on, hold on. Oh, oh wait. Hold on, hold on. All right, guys. So my brother's here. This is my brother. This is Chris. Oh yeah. Uh, we call him Little Mac. So uh, we we've talked about him a couple times on the show now. So we figured it'd be a good time to bring him in and just uh, give a give his story real quick, and and then also just shoot the shit with us. Um, so um, yeah, yeah. So uh, like you were saying on the previous two takes, um, just really fast. How old were you? Are you going to be in two weeks? And then how old were you? <laughs> how old? Just remember you said that. Yeah. <laughs> and then, um, how old were you when you got diagnosed with cancer? Uh, I'll be 35 in two weeks. Uh, I was 31 years old. I was diagnosed in September of 2015. It's pretty crazy. The way I, the way I found out. And um, the interesting story to me is how you found out you had cancer. Is that you went in for a completely different yeah. reason? Uh, your knee, right? Yeah. And then w- explain that story. I bet you that's usually the case with like a lot of things with people getting diagnosed. You know, um, but uh, I worked in an industrial complex. Uh, we dealt with a lot of steel, and I was moving this huge barrel, like the ones you make, like uh, barbecue. You know, the barbecue pits and stuff like that. Yeah, you know, yeah. and I. Felt something in my knee. I felt something twitch. I was like, shit. So, uh, like Workman's the next comp. No, I did. I was stupid. I didn't tell my boss because I didn't want to get in trouble. You know, I was just stupid because like I had total safety violation. But uh, I went and I went to the sports doctor to get an MRI. I thought I tore something in my knee, and I actually went on vacation like that week, like right after I got it. And I was up in Montana and I was hiking and shit. And I was like, fuck, man, my leg's killing me. And then like this huge lump 
just like showed up up there. It looked like a, it felt like when you get like a Charlie horse, you know, there's this lump. I was like, damn, I must uh, hold something. And then like I got home and the, uh, the doctor called me and he's like, we have your results. I was like, right on, you know, did what I tear, you know, was it my ACL, my MCL kind of did some research. <clears throat> and he's like, nah, man. Uh, he's like, you need to come in. And I was like, why? So like, you should probably bring your family too. When you come in. And I was like, holy shit, do I have uh, leukemia? And he's like, well, you know, you got to come in and check it out. I was like, fuck. So I told my boss and he's like, yeah, bro, take off. And he, he, that place was really cool with me. I'll get to that later. But I went in with my parents and the doctor's like, uh, he shows me this x-ray. And now this x-ray is my right femur, my right leg, like my thigh area. And there's this fucking huge, like six to eight inch, like tumor bursting out of the bone. And that was the crazy thing because it was bursting out of the bone. Like it was, but you had been complaining about your knee being I've been hurt for, for like a year for, or yeah, more forever. Yeah. And that's what was kind of scary to me. Is but because... I've always had messed up knees, like yes. playing sports. And, and so that's why we didn't think about it. That's much. why we didn't trip out. Yeah. yeah. I didn't even trip out. You know, I that's just crazy. thought I st tore something. And the doctor's like, yeah, man. He's like, he's like, that's, that's tumor, bro. And I was like, like I, it really never hit me. Like I, I don't think it, the severity really ever did, but like my parents were in the room, and they're just like bawling, dude. And I was just like, I guess I was in shock. I was just like, fuck. I, but at the same time, I was like, you gonna give me, you know, can I have something for the pain? You know, like <laughs> that was my first thought. I was like, dude, give me some fucking, you know, give me some drugs. I'm hurting. Like I thought, I, I thought I was just like, I thought I was like, I've always been like a hypo. I thought someone's like, I was just overreacting. And then, like, when he told me that, I was like, holy shit, dude. Yeah. But we got started, like, go ahead. You were you were always pretty positive at first, though. I mean, before you started the chemo, I mean, like, you were very positive about it. You are like, you're going to, you know. Yeah, I never thought I was going to die. I never thought it was going to kill me, even though, like, I've learned that it's very rare. And, like, there, I don't well, know. Well, talk about that, the kind of cancer that you got diagnosed with and how rare it is. And um, those things. It's called osteogenic sarcoma. And what it is is a bone cancer. And uh, so, like, ten percent of people with cancer get bone cancer, and then one percent of people with this type of bone cancer get it. So it's fucking rare shit, and uh, it's deadly. It's very deadly. And uh, there's actually a story. I don't know if there's any sports fans that listen, but uh, the Purdue fan. Did you guys watch about that? The Purdue. He had the same cancer I did. When was this? And he was like, it was, it was 2018, the college shit. Okay. And like, he got an award for like, you know bravery or something from like espn he was always on espn he had the same thing and he died was he a young kid he was uh yeah he went to purdue he was like 20 21 and that's the thing like did he do the same treatment that you did probably yeah he looked like shit you know with cbds and all that too or oh i don't know if he did the he probably didn't do the marijuana you know it was that's in what pennsylvania is that where I, you know that's a good question i we purdue, talked about or there's that indiana yeah, it's indiana like that. so yeah. they're probably like because my know? big thing is that um I think it was a combination of both. The the I mean, yes. as bad as the chemo sucks, like with the CBDs <laughs> and the THC, I think I, I it was do... a combination. Because my mom just did chemo, yeah, and that didn't work out. You know what I mean? It and I so really much. strongly believe that if she was on the same, uh, you know, plan that you were on with the CBD intake and stuff like that, that she would at least had a way better shot. I honestly believe, like, <clears throat> um, I don't. I mean, it made me feel better for sure, but it it has cancer killing properties like i totally believe that like done a lot of research i'm always you know researching it now i just had a my friend Brittany here dad um just found out his lung cancer and i'm just get on this get on this get on this get on this and she's like well i don't know and i was like listen i was like it'll make him feel better first of all and i swear to god it works i was like just believe me it'll work and she's like all right and she's like very conservative you know and i well for me it's not just the, um i've explained this on, on another podcast before too but um <coughs> Not that that just fights cancer or whatever, but like even the THC properties and stuff, like it helps you sleep more. Oh, yeah. So when you're sleeping more, you your recover. body's healing. Yeah. But then you're sleeping and you're not worrying, so mm -hmm. that's less time anxious. Yeah. Um, you're probably laughing more, giggling at stupid shit. Yeah. So you're happy, you're a little bit happier. Um, you're hungry, you're eating yeah. more. All those little things are huge when you're fighting cancer. Yeah. Just like you said, like I was laughing and stuff. I me and my brother took a video of me. And I was, I was hooked up to, I was like full blown chemo for like a couple months, you know, bald head, everything. And I'm hooked up to the IV, like I'm getting chemo and I have a few friends in my room and he, he, <laughs> I took a bunch of those, uh, THC pills. And it's me just on the, just laughing, 
slap. Yeah. And I'm like in the middle you, of chemo. In the yeah. middle of chemo, dude. Yeah. Like you gave us a couple. Yeah. You guys came. You and a quick came. Real I was quick. Bur- I was burping up marijuana for like two days after yeah, that. Two yeah. days I was burping. <laughs> yeah, that was the worst thing. Like my nurses they would They gave me the worst weed burps. My, ner- weird. my nurses would be like, it stinks in here. I'm like, I don't know. My I friends were in here burping uh, up uh, CBD uh, pills. Yeah, it wasn't CBD pills. Those were the strong ass THC pills that I was. Oh, yeah, yeah. Those were strong as shit. How many milligrams were they? 200? So, yeah, 200 milligrams. And you had to take them at least four times a day. Yeah. But well, the, the the 200 milligrams of CBD though, right? With no, you, no, right? 200 it milligrams. Of, it was one to one CBD oh, one to one. and okay. THC. And, and he nice. was like the first one doing it. Like that stuff wasn't out in 2000. You're exactly yeah. right. And it's a, in, in 2015, me, nobody was doing that shit. Yeah. It's he a point to do own. both. To, yeah, that to was shout out to Sh- Soggy man. That dude saved my life. Like he really did. I, I truly believe we'll that. We'll talk about Soggy a little bit. Like what did what did he do? Uh, how did he come in? I you mean, know, how, how do you, you knew him before? Obviously, I knew him like. Like yeah, how did you guys hook up with you know what he had and what you had? Well, Brian, I guess Brian brought it up to him and um, he Brian, came to me. Oh, he came to you. He I don't know me. how he found out, but he just found out probably from you or Manny well, or Keith. Uh, real, Jay, a segue real quick. That's drink twice for that. That's three times real quick again. Um, a segue. So when you? this happened, I I, I want to ask you two. So just to let everybody know. When this happened, Keith was living with me. So, um, you know, we're around each other every day. Um, and he's, like he said, he's really close to my brother to begin with, just because we've known each other for so long. And I think it was when you guys were in a band together at the same time, right? That was when Fate was going on. Or nah, did that just end? It just ended, yeah. Right. So, much. But, but, but anyways, you guys had been together. You and Chris had been together with each other for, for years. years hours at a de- you know it's great right. times yeah. and and so i know i was with keith keith when i let i let him know and um i i, I don't think you're going to be embarrassed by this but i, I just want to tell it because it, it was really touching to me and it really helped me but uh keith had come home from um work and uh he could tell i was kind of uh, bummed out and he said hey man what's wrong and i just I told him, I just said, um, Chris got diagnosed with cancer. And uh, Keith had lost his mom um, uh, just a couple years before that. And um, Keith immediately, as soon as I said it, I I remember he just walked outside and I I walked out and see what was going on. He was just out there and he was, you could tell it hit him like a ton of bricks. And uh, he was just sobbing. And, um, that really helped me because, you know, he, he just, you know, he, he just said how sorry he was and how he was going to do everything he could to be there for him, yeah, well, for, he, for my brother. Yeah, he really was like, I never, I never knew. I mean, I was always friends with Keith, but I, I, I never knew he felt that way about me. You know, it was just like uh, when I heard that and you really were, you were there like all the time, you know, texting me and messaging me, you know, and, you know, I don't. I didn't really want to talk to anybody at that time. You know, like when my friends came, that was cool. But I was like, I don't want to. I was just so in a bad mood. And you brought me up, man. It was fucking. It was cool, man. Like, and there would be times where where Oompa would come down. Oh yeah. And and I I truly believe that. Um. Whenever you were in chemo, there was always a revolving door of oh, yeah. support. Oh yeah. And sure. That is such a big deal in any situation where you're struggling, whether it's you know, a, a disease, um, an addiction, uh, whatever. It's a, it support is always the key. And, and, <clears throat> and there was always a revolving door of people. And I would go down there on a, on a, you know, almost daily basis. And it would be Oompa, Keith, Manny, Oompa by himself, Darren, Trev, Mikey, um, like two times a week. And, and, and they would be down there. And, you know, so I kind of want to, I would love to hear from you guys, you know, it's not just the revolving door of people, man. It was the, uh, his attitude, like, you know, not, not think, not thinking that it's going to kill you staying positive. You know what I mean? Like that with the revolving door, staying positive is such a, I don't think I could do that. Dude. I don't I have yeah, so could. much respect for you doing that, man. Right. I think, it, dude, okay. So I, I think, I think you just. You get more positive, dude. Straight up, you have to, man. Like, 
I didn't, I, ha- I felt defeated. Like I, 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 I wasn't a defeatist, like, but like when I was sh- really sick, that sucked. But other than that, dude, like I, I never, I was like, my thought was like, all right, I got to do something shitty for like, you know, a little bit, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to die. I just got to go to like a doc, a bunch of doctor's appointments. I got to go get tested. I got to go get the drugs. I got to go, you know, get chemo. I got to go get x-rays and all this shit and surgeries. I had a crazy surgery too. And, uh, well, I wanted to talk I, I about, never, um... I never thought I was going to die. Like, I think people get like, I became way more like, I know it's freaking cliche now, but spiritual. Like I believed in the positive, if you put out positive energy, you're going to receive it. I do believe like the universe gives back what you put out. And like, luckily that I wasn't that way before. And I still feel that way, you know? And I think probably a lot of survivors will tell you that, that they become more spiritual. spiritual. They understand because... I mean, I could have died straight up, but I never thought I was gonna, you know. I had a few infections where I landed in the hospital, you know, um, staph infections just from, because you have no immune system. It's just shot. So, yeah, I had to walk around in a mask all the time. It's crazy. <clears throat> well, I wanted to talk about some of the, um, like, the stuff that they had you on. Like, how many okay. times were you going to chemo, the okay. surgeries, and all these things, all this crazy <clears throat> shit they had to go through. So, the first thing they do is um, they install what's called a port in your uh chest and that's so instead of you going to the doctor or get chemo every time they don't have to stick a needle in your arm every time you know because that would be shit that would hurt after you know you're going every week my mom take a week off two on week off two on so they give you a port and what it is is this little thing that goes under your skin and they can puncture it and it goes straight into a vein into your bloodstream they have it connected with a tube so that's the first thing and make uh, make life a lot easier made life a lot easier i mean it's it's not too it wasn't too bad. I mean, it was. You could tell it was there, but like I could tell it was there. Um, but to start off, like they did a, uh, they did an X-ray and they went in with like a probe and they took a piece out of the tumor to see if it was benign or cancer. So that's the first thing they do. And then <clears throat> after that, we're like, all right, we're gonna set you up with a uh, chemotherapy doctor. What are they called? Uh, oncologist. Oncologist. Mm-hmm. So I went met with the oncologist. Um, should I even say where I went? Well, we can say the Mayo Clinic. Yeah, yeah I went to the Mayo to Clinic. And uh, the doctor, the sports doctor that diagnosed said, go there. He's like, he's one of the best doctors in the world. So I was like, all right. And he's like, you're in by Mayo. You should go. And then after that, I started chemo. Um, the, the crazy. The, they had you in there. How many sessions of chemo? Oh, geez. Yeah, like, how often were you tell going? You. Oh, I was going. And how long are you there for? I was going for... Um, it's going like I had like a week on, then like seven days, and then like a week off, then like nine days. And, then and like how long are you there? Off. A few hours? No, I'm there all week. Oh yeah, I'm I forgot bed. about that. I'm I I'm, forgot I'm there about for that. seven days straight. Like I'm I'm checked in. I'm I'm not just getting chemo and going home. I'm there for seven days. And, and they're, and they're because, pumping it the whole because time because it's so bad. Yeah, and I'll they have to, again. They have to monitor. They're your pumping vitals. it the whole time. They're while pumping you're there? the whole time, and then well, they'll pump it. They'll do the run, which usually lasts like twelve to twenty four hours. You know, some because I was on different shit. No. I, can even, I can even tell you the di- different stuff. Is is seven days on chemo normal, or did you have a m- more aggressive case than anything else? It was normal it, for me. No, yeah, it was no. very aggressive. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. It's very aggressive. Like normally, because yeah, my mom didn't have that. Yeah, right. kind of like chemo. normally, the a lot of the like, I think from my experience, the vast majority of people who have cancer, like probably like sixty to fifty to six, well, sixty to seventy percent, maybe even higher. <clears throat> what they do is they just go in and they have like a little like cubicle that's all mm-hmm. like um quiet and like kind of cut off but it's full of them it's like this big room full of them and people are just sitting there in a chair and they're getting their drip they're getting my mom the had that's very very and it's sad about four hours it's about a day. four hours long and you know, it's not like every once day a week. like once a week yeah they go in and maybe twice a week something like that you know sorry if you've got this before and i just don't know the information but um yeah so i was in there i was in i was admitted to the hospital i slept there i did everything there man was, when did when did you start? Probably like a month, probably like three, two, three weeks after I found out. No, 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 no. Oh. They got you into the mail within like days, yeah, if I remember I, correctly. It was something crazy. Yeah. It was fast. What, what, when did you start feeling shitty from the chemo? Oh, was the it, first one. That's what I the know. first one. The first one they, they gave me, um, the first one they gave me, I think was the most harsh. It was called doxorubicin and, uh, oh, I can't remember. I'll probably think of it later. And the it's two drugs. It's doxorubicin and something else. And this is the stuff when you think about chemo, the drugs they give you, like puking, shitting all day, you know, 
I even, this is gross, but I, at one time I was even shitting and puking at the same time, like into a bucket, you know, it was I've terrible. It was terrible, man. And uh, <clears throat> so that stuff was pretty harsh. So since the very first one, I was very, very sick. And I was like, dude, if it's going to be like this forever, I'm going to fucking, I don't know if I can hang. And then they do that like once a month, maybe twice a month. They do that for one round, seven days. The harsh stuff. The harsh stuff, maybe. No, once a month, and then the next would be a thing called Remicade. <clears throat> and a lot of people that have uh, rheumatoid arthritis, they get Remicade like pills and capsules. It's an autoimmune it's an auto, stopper. It's so an autoimmune help. Like, it, it stops your immune system. Yeah. And uh, so they'd give me that, you know. Uh, stops your immune system? Yeah, because so autoimmune diseases like uh, arthritis and uh, the stuff that – so arthritis, how arthritis works is – it it's inflammation and it's attacking your wherever it's at your joints, joints. your bone your joints your bones whatever it's inflammation's attacking it so the what the Re problem that happens is that when your immune system is fighting it the there's like this battle going on and that's what causes the pain and the struggle right so if they can just put your immune system on hold so what Remicade does is it it puts your immune system on hold so you're not in as much pain and and you don't want your immune system fighting chemo because the chemo is needed to shrink the tumor. And if your immune system is fighting chemo, um, you, it won't work. It won't shrink the tumor. So you have to put your immune system on hold, which is why it's so hardcore because you get a cold, you get a, yeah. anything, and boom, you're, next thing you know, like, he would get – That's the would, that's the doses that people with, rent with – they're not giving that to the RA patients. I mean, they were giving me straight up fucking – that shit made me sick as hell. Like I think that was higher actually doses, much I've, higher, much doses, higher doses yeah. than people with rheumatoid arthritis. Um, but yeah, that was chemo too. I mean, but it didn't make me. It didn't make me sick, like vomiting and. Um, they call chemo that. chemo. Um, it's chemo is really like many many drugs. Tons of different drugs yeah. are chemo, but they just have them all under the umbrella as chemo, right? Yeah. So there are different. There's definitely different kinds and different effects, but like the first round was. That's so did your hair fall out immediately? Um, it started. <clears throat> I mean, it was falling out like during chemo. Like when I was there oh, wow. getting my first one, I would I'd be like, "Fuck, this sucks," and I'd be like, "Holy shit!" Like it's yeah. that quite quick, dude. I was probably bald within like two weeks, like completely bald. Wow. So then like, uh, everything <clears throat> was bald too. I mean, <laughs> I had no hair on my body, dude. <laughs> Nowhere. Damn. That was weird. That'd be nice for it a little nice bit. It was nice for wiping, you know. <laughs> <laughs> no dingleberries. <laughs> you know, a lot cleaner. <laughs> yeah. Cue ball. Guys, think about it out there. <laughs> yeah. Um, so what about the uh, surgeries that you had? So I know you had some pretty intense surgeries. I've had and... a lot of surgeries from this, and only one when I <clears throat> had the cancer. And oh, that real was... quick, can I ask oh, this? Oh, yeah. What stage of cancer were you in? You like... know what? I never knew. I don't think they ever told me. It dude. was his cancer was so aggressive. I mean, it's so aggressive. Four or something. Yeah, they, they never even, even told us stage. They didn't even tell me. They're just like, you need, like, you're in there, dude. We're gonna get you in. So that had to have been progressing for years. That remember? What? So that was so crazy. It can yeah. start out from a, just a, a single cell, like you know, like just a cell in your body. It's just a cancer cell, and yeah, I have no idea how long it was in there. I have no idea how I got it. Are you, are you considered cancer free now? Has it been five years? No. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, it'll be five years, and I think this is like year two or year three, something okay. like that. Actually, you have a PET scan coming I up. I have to do a PET scan, yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I'm kind of freaked out, you know. I don't know what I'd do if I got it again. I don't know. I probably wouldn't do chemo. I'd probably just do, like, I'll go the Steve Jobs way, and hopefully the weed works, you know. I wouldn't do chemo again, man. Really? Uh-uh. Fuck no. Mm -mm. I, I'd probably go out, because, I don't know, man. So you don't I'm, I'm afraid if I got it again, it'd just it'd do me in, man. So so if you if you <clears throat> went back... And you knew this now, you wouldn't have done the chemo? Do you think you still would have I would have done the chemo the first time. Oh, the first time. I wouldn't do it again. I see. Again. Okay. I'd just be like, I don't know, man. My parents and brother would probably be like, well, I'm doing it. But I'd be like, oh, man. Just too much or what? It's hard, man. I don't want to go through all that shit again. It was just yeah, like, oh, man, just trying to get back your life, man. Like, it's just not the physical stuff. Like, the chemo affects your brain, man. Like. <clears throat> I was like, well, I'm sure you're on a shit ton of drugs too. Oh yeah, I don't remember a lot. Like that's the good thing Brian's here because I was so doped up. They had him on. They uh, had me on Matt so Oxy's many drugs. On. They, they had, had him on oxycontin, oxycodone, morphine, um, uh, fentanyl. Fentanyl Let patches. Let me ask you this though. Yeah, fentanyl patches. I know. And the get... micro drip. And the micro drip. Dude. Can I ask you just this though? I know. Don't get me wrong. I know you're in a lot of pain, but did you really need all those painkillers? Oh, no, yeah. no, no. At first you. I did. don't know. 
I mean, after the surgery, the first surgery you did. Oh yeah. Because he would come out. So Dude, they 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 took a, no I this much out of my leg of my femur. My femur is missing it this much. Like, yeah, it was a hardcore surgery. Dude. I meant when you were on the chemo, not the surgery. But... Oh, did I need the... He, I don't think he was on that many drugs during many pain medications I was. on the chemo. No, they didn't have you on the the fentanyl micro. They didn't have me on that shit, but yeah. I was still on... So it wasn't until the surgery I was getting, that I was getting like drugs. I was getting like 180 oxycodone, 30s a, a freaking month when oh, I first started. Fuck. Yeah, they over-prescribed me for sure. Yeah, the he first was month. taking nine a day or something like that. I was taking like 30s? ten a day. Yeah. God damn. Yeah, man. and I was still. I used to snort those for breakfast. Five right? a day for breakfast. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah it, it, that became a problem too. I mean, dude, I wouldn't want to go through that shit again. Like, I'd be. Is that IDs. the other part of it? Yeah. The. Yeah, it was a dude. It was not only did I survive cancer, but I also beat you know drug addiction. And I'll tell you right now, dude. Freaking. Yeah, dude. That, I'm more. I'm more. Of, I'm more proud about that. When than, was that though? Like exactly. It was like. Probably like six months after the I finished chemo. No, that you beat the drug addiction. The drug addiction, jeez. That's a still an ongoing battle. I don't think he ever beat it, but he's he's sober. Yeah, yeah. I don't use I don't use pills anymore. That's I mean, good. I don't I don't know. I just don't, I I don't want to go back there, man. Like once you, it's just it's sad. Once you take one, dude, you fucking back, dude. It's yeah. Really sad. But yeah, man, it's that was harrowing. That that was, I mean, going through withdrawals from opiates is was worse than chemo for me i mean because the chemo they're taking care of me they're making me feel good you know they're like oh you, here's a xanax you know you want to go to sleep here's an ambient but going through withdrawals they're just like sorry here's xanax some, withdrawals here's even some, worse you know here's some water and he was going through xanax withdrawals at the same time as the opiate withdrawals yeah. i went through xanax and methadone withdrawals yeah, I know uh, yeah and i remember fuck that oh yeah. shit you you saw me every day <laughs> and, yeah, and, I mean, sleep and, 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 and why are about, those different what an ambient or, uh, or Xanax, Xanax, Xanax and, and benzos. Yeah, are, okay. They're in the class. They're a benzo. They and, affect um, your brain differently than painkillers. Yeah. Yeah, but they're actually the one of the only two things I will actually. You could die from withdrawal. You could actually die from benzo withdrawal, and you could actually die from alcohol withdrawal. You won't ever die from opiate withdrawal. Oh, it really? feels like you're dying. You, but you will never die because of opiate withdrawal. I but, didn't know that. Yeah, but you can actually die from benzo and I know from alcohol. alcohol. Yeah. yeah. And that's and benzos are like Xanax, Klonopins, fucking all the shit that makes you forget your few days. <laughs> and that's another like good reason for weed, man. Like CBD and fuck yeah, you know. I don't I don't really like getting stoned anymore, you know. But the CBD, I take that as much as I can. It's expensive though. Like, yeah, I didn't think it would be that expensive. <clears throat> and then like some of the stuff they have is like it's, it's weak, you know. You were talking about the 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 stuff that the chemo causes with your brain. Talk about that. Oh yeah. So I went back, to, I tried to go back to work, like, um, I don't know, probably six months after I was cleared. I was cleared in May, and Jesus. I went back to March. I went back to work in March, so nine months. And uh, I thought I could do it, and like, I was, I was at a new job, and I was trying to learn stuff, and I just, I couldn't, I couldn't grasp it, man. I just couldn't, I'd always be like, oh, what do I do again? Like, it was a pretty hardcore job, like, a lot of engineering, and um, you know, I was doing, I was a running tests for an oil company place that so it was hardcore these gauges we had to do and i just couldn't remember anything um i couldn't put things in series i i mean i didn't i had i had trouble like typing and like figuring out my sentences and stuff like it was chemo, well, I mean, chemo brain like it's not like a real thing that doctors say but it's it's real man well like, it can be maybe i mean i'm sure it is the chemo but it's got to also be shit. that you went back six months later you just went through a life altering experience i mean that had to have been on your mind i mean when you're at work and you go to work at your day job i don't know about you guys but i think about life and all kinds of crazy shit constantly while i'm doing stuff you know what i mean so you probably had all these thoughts and in I your phys head i you physically I mean? wasn't so, ready either my leg wasn't ready it wasn't i mean you were still on pain medication i was, I was oh and that dude i was on a high dose like i was just drenched every day my doc my nodding boss. off no i didn't i never <laughs> nodded off I never nodded off of my i just sweat like crazy because it was real active job my, every day everybody at work be like dude are you okay and they all knew they're all dudes like our age you know cool like us like he's nodding they're like yeah <laughs> like dude why is he always sleep at lunch dude, why is he always... <laughs> when when uh was that after they they installed the titanium no that was the um because I want, I want you to talk about what happened after the surgery the when they first installed the cadaver bone well, I went through a lot. So uh, the first surgery was they installed, they took out the infected part 
uh, in my bone. And then they also took out pieces of my muscle and tissue because it, it made its way into the muscle and tissue. So my right leg on the side is like the size of my wrist. Like right here, it's like tiny because they took out the meat and, and the, the tumor, right? Or yeah, the, 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 the cancer, right? Yeah, because it was embedded in the. Can you explain how big that was? Wasn't it like a size of? It was a, like this oh. big, and probably like you know this this big, and probably like that thick. You know, or like I guess. Of just we have pictures of. Yeah, that we have we pictures that. that no. I mean, they're pretty gross. Yeah, yeah, yeah. they're uh, terrible. No, but no. <laughs> they should yeah. not be on Facebook. I yeah. don't know how they. <laughs> yeah. If you want to look at them, go to his Facebook. Yeah, but I'm not a, definitely not going to show can, those. Facebook? Yeah, we can put a link. It's I think, just his meat leg. It's, it's so it's gross. gross. They actually took. Oompa, Oompa they take likes that out, gross shit. Show Oompa. He loves that. They, gross they shit. take out the bone. They took out the bone. Yeah, they took out his femur. I mean, they took it out. They took out his whole femur. And the doctor actually like took all kinds of pictures, like. He was like proud of him, so he's like, I would damn. Love, I want to explain this real quick, because this is very interesting. It's, it's hardcore, but he, this is freaking interesting, shark, right? Are you talking about the meat? Well, so you got when he was talking about how he had pain before, you got to remember. So you think if, if that pain started, you know, like two years before, that tumor was growing in his marrow. The tumor got so big that it literally broke through the bone yeah, and, conti crack, and continued world. growing. And Dude, it, it, it was like a, a hole. It was a hole in my bone. In the, it, causing it, your knee to be in pain. So he yeah, was just my knee. It was, my thigh wasn't even in pain. That's the crazy part. He, Until a week before, you know, I really was like, Dude, what the hell? So he was walking around on a femur that basically had been broken. This tumor broke its way through. And the tumor ha creates like a hard sack around it. It exploded so, from the inside out. Yeah. So you would, like, we were worried that when it broke the bone, those bone shards could pop the tumor. But, and, and then once that tumor pops, then it metastasizes and just that cancer just spreads everywhere. Yeah, that's crazy. I, I was lucky it, was, it only went to my leg. We were also lucky that you went in when you did. Yeah. Like what if you my you know what if you just played it off and then just waited another few you know it would just got spread and got worse. My friend was giving me shit in Montana because he's like, dude, let's go hiking. I'm like, all right, and then I'd be like, dude, my knee hurts. He's like, come on, pussy, come on, quit being a pussy. And I was like, all right, you know, I'm up here. I don't want to be a pussy. Like I was, I was agreeing with him. I'm like, yeah, I'm here, dude. I want to do this. And then uh, when I got home, I called him. I'm like, dude, you're never gonna believe it. And he's like, man, I'm so sorry. Man. Shout out to Tyler. Yeah, Tyler's, Tyler's cool. Shit. I would have. I, I never. I never felt bad. I never felt. I, I would have done the same him, thing. I was never. Pussy. Yeah, <laughs> I was thinking the same Pussy. thing. I was like, dude, I'm up in Montana. beautiful. He oh, lives I, up in Kalispell, and it's just imagine. Glacier Park. It's just, it was awesome. But I was like, damn. So so, anyways, that happened. The bone broke its way through, and 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 at that same time, he got diagnosed. So the doctor's like, okay, we gotta we gotta shrink the tumor. Yeah. Down to twenty percent to do to remove the femur. They shrink the tumor with the help of chemo, chemo, and mainly the marijuana and the THC pills. Yeah, yeah the cannabis. Um, and then they remove the femur. And how they remove the femur is they took the top of his kneecap, right at the top of his kneecap, <laughs> cut it off, Gross. and and right below the part that attaches to his hip bone. So it, it you know this much of his femur, and then they put in a cadaver femur the same size it was supposed to be the same size we'll get into that i think it was it was just yeah so anyways they put the cadaver bone in and then drill in a <laughs> uh brackets brackets these medical grade steel brackets to hold them together and what holds the femur bone to my existing to the cadaver bone to my existing femur and they will grow together and that mm -hmm. the blood will start in theory, the blood is supposed to start flowing through them like a regular. But bone. that didn't yeah, happen. That didn't happen. What happened? What happened was is uh, the bottom where where the towards my knee that that actually uh, combined and became you know it was trying to do its thing, but up top by my hip it didn't. So I had to get a, a surgery like three months, or actually probably like six months later. I had to get a bone graft and a piece of my hip, my hip up here. Or my pelvis, my pelvis. That's it. Uh, they took a piece of that out, uh, shaved down the bone, and used those bone shavings and opened me back up and put it where the gap was. Basically, the used them as shims. Yeah, yeah. And 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 you guys got to remember that. Uh, the femur... And that was I, that was after I was cleared from chemo, so I was on chemo during that. But still, there was a lot of issues from. And, you know and femur uh femur work where they're shaving your femur and shaving your bone or if you have a compound fracture in your femur they they say that's the most painful uh thing that somebody can go through like it's up there with a pregnancy yeah that's that that they say it's like giving birth yeah if you're a painful man, that's how, how painful, painful it was is. yeah so i was walking around with that 
it's broken like that for like a week. Jesus. For like probably longer, but I, that's when I noticed the bump. I only noticed it for a week, so I don't know how long it was like that. So what do you mean by broken? What happened? I have no idea. I didn't fall in Montana. Um, no, no, I'm talking about after the they they replaced the cadaver. Oh, they replaced it the, after they put, I mean. <laughs> chemo fog. <laughs> chemo, brain fog. Ke- chemo brain. Yeah. Um, I mean, I went after they replaced it. After they replaced, <laughs> after they re- <laughs> you could use that for the rest of your life. Chemo fog. Yeah, if you ever have a brain fog, yeah. just be like chemo fog. It's, Dude, it's, it's still it's, it's a real thing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna, hey, hey, real that's quick. gonna be a keyword. In Explain the this donor bone though. Oh yeah, who is it from? Yeah, I don't know, but it had like a lot of like they, I saw like ghosts following me around. And... Did they show you the guy you get it from? What were they on death row know. for? Yeah, uh, you know what were they what on death row for? Yeah, no shit. I wrote it in my journal. I can't show you guys that. So, <laughs> so but yeah, I know, I know. I I thought about that for a honestly. Little bit. Is it weird having another dude's leg in there? Well, it's not Bone? in me anymore. It's oh yeah, like they in, took. Oh yeah, took it out. It could be a female too, Keith. Explain why they. Yeah, took I it never out. knew. I wonder if it was. No, it can't. <laughs> Why'd they take it out? It's because there's there's tons of genders, Keith. Could have been a, a Zim or a Zer. Or... <laughs> Didn't have to be a her or a him. A Zim. Um, That's why it's all fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I have to edit this out. <laughs> um, you say that every show. I know. Um, so so um, I, that, that cadaver bone was in for probably like a year. And uh, they finally said you can go back to work. So I went back to work and I... I was in a lot of pain, and um, I, it, it still hurt, you know? So, I actually, I had to eventually end up quitting that job because I was in so much pain. Um, there's a lot in my hip, a lot. I knew, like, where they, you know, connected. I could feel the braces and sh- stuff. This And um, finally, like, one night I was at home, and I felt this snap. felt it pop. I heard it. You know, like you, you can hear it like in your ear, like when you hear like a, a joint crack or something, you can hear it in your ear. I heard it and I felt it and I was like, oh, fuck. Um, and I didn't think much of it. And then like two days later, uh, I just couldn't move. I couldn't walk. And I went into the hospital and they're like, yeah, dude, it snapped. And I was like, fuck. You know what? We're going to, what we're going to do is we're going to grow you to, we're, we're, we're going to repair it right now. We're going to put in more braces and we're going to pu- put in more screws. And I was like, all right. And they're like, wait like six months. Wait, they're like, wait six months and we're going to make you a custom, um, like sheath. Leg. No, no, no. A custom like titanium leg, like all, all custom just for me. No, no, straight up. Yeah. But I had to wait. Oh, that's what it and was. And I had to wait another six months. And during that six months, like a month later, I got it. That was in October when I had to go get it fixed. A month later, it popped out and popped out even worse. And what he means by popped out is he means like it goes like this: like here's my thigh, normal. When I got it popped the second time, my thigh went like this. Like you could see. I think bone. I saw the X-ray on that one. Yeah, yeah. it's terrible. Ooh. It's because the 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 femur was was the fake femur was like, together can... like this. Yeah. And you have a, a metal bracket going down here. Yeah. That's just like, just like right here. Yeah. So if, if that femur is a little bit short, every time you move, it's doing this a little bit. Yeah. And that metal bracket is moving with it. Yeah. That metal bracket snapped. It's a titanium metal yeah. bracket, dude, like thick. And like when they it, gave it to me, when I remember they gave yes. it to me. And when it snapped, his femur went break yeah. like this. It just, so it was a compound fracture. That happened was, twice in four months that happened twice in a month oh twice in a month so he had october then November. two compound fractures after they cut it off this is after surgery this is after chemo you know like a year later (laughs) this is i gotta tell a funny story huh i gotta tell a funny story hold on hold on so let's let's get back let's talk about that off camera yeah the when he broke when it happened the second time (laughs) we're at home and at this time uh i was at your house not mom and dad's so at this time um Keith had, uh, I think you were living uh, down down the street, right? On uh, over by Manny. Uh, yeah, Manny's Roosevelt Road. Yeah. So Keith's living <clears throat> down there. Uh, another one of our best friends uh, moved into the house, and uh, he had been there for like a year. And Chris is over, and we're sitting. He's he's actually. Um, I remember what it was. He went to go grab the guitar yeah. to sit down on the couch and play the guitar. So he stood up, and at this time he had a walker still, and yeah. so he was using the walker. This was a month after my. Yeah. surgery i just talked about yeah so. and so he went to go grab the guitar went to go sit down and when he sat down in the couch 
he screamed, yeah. literally screamed. Yeah. Right. And I went. You know what? You know what I screamed? I was like, "Fuck! It happened again!" I was yeah. Like, Fuck. <laughs> and and but it happened worse at this point. And you could see his oh. leg. We, there's pictures. If you guys, we'll put a link to the pictures. Yeah. So you guys, if you guys want to see him, I don't think go he, see him. I think we're gonna have to force Keith. <laughs> yeah. The picture literally. Him. You guys fucking made me see. Yeah. You guys fucking Dude, they're incredible. In face. They're awesome. His, his thigh I was get... literally like you this. Could see, yeah, you could see the. You know, when you just looked at his thigh, it's and gross. and I, he wouldn't let me call how many an fucking ambulance. Times you gonna explain how his thigh was? He okay, went, he wouldn't let me call an ambulance, and he was so such in pain. He literally passed out three times on the way to yeah, the, yeah. to the Mayo Straight Clinic. Up. You take like home? like every bump, he was trying to go as slow as possible, and every bump, like minuscule, like tiny little, like a rock in the road. I was like, oh, remember what Chris did, dude? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. <laughs> So we what? get him, we roll him up in the wheelchair. So Chris Blanzy's with us. Yeah. Shout out Blanzy. Yeah. So we roll him up in the wheelchair, <laughs> and uh, and they instantly think that he's a they drug think I'm a addict. Dope, they think I'm a dope addict. Yeah. yeah. Think, I would have thought he's on that. Dope. Yeah. And he's a little gay. Totally. Addict. Yeah. Totally. They think they he's did. a dope addict. With Chris coming in, Blanzy with you. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Look <laughs> at these guys. That's so uh, they think he's a dope addict, and um, uh, they are basically just giving him. Stink eye. eye rolls, stink they, eye, yeah, right? They yeah, they yeah. Let them be. They're all... Hey, fill out your insurance. I'm like, hey! Let him be. Hey, let's go. And they're like, they call hey, the chill out, chill out. Yeah. And he's like screaming. I'm, I'm in pain, bro. Yeah. I'm in agony. Like, and, like and, I've never been in this much pain. Like, even... Yeah. And even at this time... What, what they're they telling think. you to walk. Yeah. <laughs> they're like, can you get up and sign this? Yeah. At, at that time... <laughs> The the with, with the Mayo Clinic, the Mayo Clinic has an emergency room that's kind of separate of the Mayo Clinic. Yeah. But at the Mayo Clinic, he's like a local superstar because of the the type of surgery well, let me, he got. Let me tell him about. Oh, it's him again. So, so let me tell him. Check this out. Check this out. So, Chris is saying, put him on. What was the? What was? The... He t- he told him uh, to get a line in his arm uh, ASAP and give him the shit that killed Michael yeah. Jackson. Yeah. Yeah. And so. He's what? saying that to the nurses because the nurses wouldn't put a drip in. They him wouldn't and give, give him anything. pain medication. So, He's screaming. So, He's literally passing out, dude. So I'm in the room. They finally get me in the room, and I have jeans on. Right? It's <laughs> it's November. How classic is that line? Oh Belanzi goes, get a line in his arm asap and give him the shit that killed Michael Jackson. And they, oh, oh Belanzi, yeah, <laughs> yeah. How fucking that was I such a good. <laughs> So Chris actually funny. helped me out during that because he actually had me laughing during that. Yeah. But they took me oh, back shit. to the room. You know, they took me back finally. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I didn't hear that part. I thought <laughs> the doctor said that. No, <laughs> the doc say that. Fucking <laughs> 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 doctor. If the doctor said that, that'd be even funnier. <laughs> he was like, "What the fuck? Do you guys know who this is? <laughs> the fucking doc said that. What's the fucking kill the kid?" <laughs> Like, he's all tripping out. Like, I don't want to die. <laughs> I thought that too, because oh cause, cause Chris was, you know, the golden star in the docks. Like, Jesus Christ, McClay back here. Give me the shit that fucking killed Michael Jackson. Oh my God, oh That'd be way funnier. But still, but still Blanzy do it's funny shit. No, but the dude tried to, I had, I had a nurse back there, and I was like, yo, he said, like, you got to take your jeans off. I was like, nah, bro, not until you give me something. You couldn't even move. Yeah, the, yeah. No, no, the, no. He's wait, like, listen. what? A roofie? Wait, wait listen. <laughs> hey, 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 that, hey. That, that, sounded to weird. that sounded weird. Yeah, the doc's like, what? A, a roofie first? Or? <laughs> no, you're not, you're not when you're like, it. not taking me some first. <laughs> no, I was like, dude, I was like, you, I was like, you can't, you can't touch me. You can't touch me until I have something for the pain man because I wasn't on oh. anything at this time. That's right. what I was trying to get. You know, oh, I clean see. I shit. Doc was like, I'm gonna bring someone back in here with me, then we can continue. No. It was nuts, man. Like, that how are you crazy. supposed to take off your jeans? Your he tried jeans? to take off my jeans. When, he touched me, and I just fucking screamed. He touched you? No, 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 he just, normally, he tried to pick up my huh, leg. Real quick, oh, like, quick. I'm going to say, normally, ERs, wherever hospitals, don't give a fuck about taking your pants. They just cut them cut right him. off, no yes. matter how much they are. And you're like, no, It's because no. they still think he's just trying to get, he's a dope fiend trying yeah. to get drugs at this point. Yeah. And so, it was so ridiculous. So that, Chris is like the, a walk-in, like at Circle K, where the, they're like, have you seen this? You know what's bad? When the nurse is like, whoa. Holy shit! Let me go get somebody. You know, but in the very, 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 very back of your head, like I'm gonna get some good drugs out of this. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. I was already fucking. I was already in it to win it at that point, dude. Half of his anxiety was waiting to get them. Yeah, <laughs> so, so he kind of has the luck. I'm like, like well, in, in all honesty, they give me a bunch of shit for like asking for him there, because that's when they the government started like kind of cracking down. Like that was like a year, year and a half after I, you know, 
when I first got sick, they were like, and they then, like, started with you first. Yeah, nope. yeah. And then like, he's dude, the first guy. But the doctor, <laughs> we cracking the down doctor now. on <laughs> the doctor on shift. He remember he was like, oh, I know who Chris is. We all know who Chris is. And I was like, holy shit. Yeah, they, in a good he, way or a bad way. Like, in a good I'm way, famous. he goes get in a line in his arm now. They're we like, know yeah. Who he they're is. like, get him yeah. upstairs. Yeah. So, and anyways, was, after that, they put in a steel rod, and because my knee was so <laughs> jacked up from all the screws, they had to give me a new knee. At that time, before the second, third surgery, that is, or fourth surgery, the second break, I had my real knee, but they put so many screws in my real knee that you what they ended metal. up doing, they took, they, they, yeah. they just gave me a titanium rod for my femur instead of the Which they cadaver. should have done the fucking first time. They should have done the first time. Yeah. Because if, if they would have done that the first time, I wouldn't have a fake knee. Is and that standard me. procedure? No, it, no. This is a doctor who's got a new type of surgery he's trying to make With the perfect. cadaver? Uh, no, no. He's trying so, to make it so you keep, have a real bone in your body. Well, we don't. Well, I, so I, I, we don't kind of, want to say his name. But, is this experimental but, kind but of? But you have a doctor kind of. who's like the the probably the best orthopedic surgeon in the country, if mm-hmm. not the world, at this point. Yeah, he he saved like senators and congressmen yeah, and, and all the sports people. And so he's got an idea that th- like this surgery isn't the normal way to do this surgery. This cancer is so rare, and it usually this is the weird thing. It usually only happens in people under the age of thirteen. So no, 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 no. Uh, Adolescents, like okay. sixteen through nineteen, is usually the age of people getting this disease. So that was another reason why me getting osteogenic sarcoma at thirty-one was. They're like, that's weird. Yeah. Like, so maybe teenagers. you had it the whole time, and that's when you found maybe. it. Maybe. So this doctor is like, I got a way. And usually, what they do is, if if they can't shrink the tumor, they're either going to cut off the leg or yeah. you're going to die. Yeah. I could have lost my leg. Yeah. Like I bitch about like having my knee, but sometimes it's like, dude, I could have had a, I could have had a stump, you know. I mean, well, if you don't have a metal rod, would you have a leg? Yeah. Uh, no. 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 The cadaver bone wasn't working, and so this doctor thought, okay, so I can come up with this idea to use this cadaver bone, and he, this is a he, new idea. He, uh, we well, don't know. It's a semi-new idea. This they is had the only, only done, idea. Well, they new told... enough to where there's not enough evidence. Yes. Basically, yes, exactly. and it's the only idea they told me. They're like, "This is what we're gonna do." They didn't say, "Hey, we I know, can put it's in bullshit. a steel rod, yeah. and we can, you know, do this." And That's, yeah, I, I didn't know. Yes, yeah. yeah. so it, yeah, the, I think the always reason, get a second opinion. I think it was him, just you know, express like just being hubris, just being like, "Yo, let me, let me show off what I can do. Put this in a journal or something like that." Yeah. But um, the doc here's the he's thing a good about, dude though. He's he a great guy, you and know, he saved thing, my life straight up. But, yeah, here's the way doctors work. Doctors <clears> have to totally take out their emotion they have to just be this is what we're gonna do da, 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 da. so they, oh, they, sure. they they act like they're they're they have no empathy but that's just because they have to do that and thank god for the nurses because Dude, the nurses, they're angels man that's one thing yeah I, I bet you every cancer survivor or patient will tell you those people you know men women all you know from 18 to freaking 65 um incredible people man they yeah. are they put up with hell. They, they, dude, they take care. Like seriously, they take care of you, man. It's like your mom, bro. It's yeah. like they're angels, man. Like I seriously believe that. Anytime I meet anybody that's a nurse, I freaking give them a hug, and I'm just like, you have no idea how important you are to people. Like, I have so much respect for the nurses. Like, did you have a nurse who loved you? Many, dude. I mean, I. I you know the song I'm yeah, talking about? Yeah. 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 Failure. Yeah. You know the curtain cover? Yeah. Yeah. The, those type. The what? What? <laughs> what? <laughs> the curtain? What? Yeah, uh, no. I mean, you know, the nurses there did something really cool, and this is goes goes back to they didn't give a shit about the weed too. Motorboats, yeah. <laughs> they, is that what they do? Oh yeah. So. Oh, the the older ladies, like the way they, some ladies there were like sixty five, seventy. They'd be like, "Do you want a massage?" And be like, "Ha ha!" And they're like, "No, seriously." And I told my mom that, and she's like, "Yeah, yeah." She's they like, want to make would, you happy. She's like, "Nurses, that was normal for nurses." Like how like, happy? Back in the day. Yeah, happy I know, endings, right? Like Robert Kraft happy. Yeah. No, I mean. <laughs> What hospital is this? I want to yeah. write this one yeah. down. So at the end of when when Chris got taken out of the oncology ward, this was this was so heartwarming and amazing because Chris might not he he knows it and uh, I'm gonna bring it up just because most people probably in that situation are like this. You're you're in such a shitty situation, such a shitty mood, and little things always piss you off. Oh, and yeah. and he would, uh, he, I would be in there, and we would be in there, and you guys probably saw this a couple times. He would treat these nurses like shit. No, I wouldn't. Hold on. I believe that. Yes, you would. You would. You would I believe that you would, too, bro. Yes, you would. You would make very bad comments because like they to were. Con- them? Hold on. You probably hit on them. They were constantly yeah. asking you and checking. Remember, you couldn't sleep because they were coming in and getting oh, yeah. your vitals every two hours yeah. or every hour. Yeah. So every time they would come in to do his vitals, he would be so angry. He'd be like, 
I just fucking leave me alone. Oh, I'll tell you when I got mad. I know. I I know for one instance when I, after my surgeries, the physical therapy people would come and be like, be like, hey, come on, we got to do walk. I'm like, no. I'm like, no, I'm not doing it. I freaking hurt. And they're like, come on. And they wouldn't leave. And finally, sometimes I'd just be like, get the fuck out of my room. Yeah. I don't got to do what you fucking say. I remember being a dick like that. And, and they wouldn't act like it never happened. That's what he's talking these about. Nurses yeah. were so, <laughs> yeah. These nurses were so amazing. They would come in the next time and treat you like they were your kid. And when he, he was in there for so long, when he left, they all lined up outside. Did they? Yes, they did. I don't when remember. when they were when you were out of it. Oh yeah. And when we were rolling him out in the chair, they all lined up outside, and clapped as he walked by. Shut up! I, I don't swear that. to God. I don't wow. swear to God. I don't. Cool. And me They're saying like, like, finally, this asshole's <laughs> gone. Fuck this asshole. Fuck this guy. This guy's. Fuck you. Fuck this guy. <laughs> this guy's, fuck I, don't, you. I don't. I don't remember a lot. Like yeah. I really don't, man. They had me so. I was on so many uh, benzos. I don't remember a lot. Yeah. Dude. And and the nurses also they every time a new nurse would come this was great when a new nurse would come to be part of Chris's team the the head nurse or the mm-hmm. nurse that know most about him would bring up the pictures and oh, say yeah. look at this this is what this kid's going through and the nurse that was seeing new stuff once he, they saw his pictures and what he's been going through this for this last two years at this time see Brian would see this shit yeah. I don't remember the nurse would be like okay I know what I'm dealing with here because. You know, otherwise they just they understand his anger. They understand yeah. his anger. Well, they understand yeah. his pain. They understand that comes from pain. Yeah, and you know he's when he first came out of the surgery where they removed his femur. This was fucking scary. He came out of the surgery, and as soon as he woke up, he was like, uh, for a little bit, he was like, okay. But then his brain realized that he was in pain, and his jaw started going. And it, it wouldn't stop shaking. And then his whole body started shaking because he's in so much pain. It's unbelievable that he's, he's starting to go in. That. He's going in convulsions, right? And they fucking put him back under. They put him back under. And and they would, because they, the God, only way I they. I don't remember yeah, that. The only way that they could <laughs> keep him. Thank God you don't, man. Yeah, but don't But the that. only way that they could without, because it, the pain was so much. And, and he was already on you know, from the chemo, he was just in, you know, man, his, his, so you got to remember the chemo had his immune system on Shot. hold Shot and the then shit. they do a surgery. So yeah. think about that. You have no immune system when the surgery happens. I was like four months in when they did. The surgery. So your immune system is like sending endorphins. You've been leached of your endorphins. So think about if you have no endorphins and your body has no normal way to deal with pain and even and your pain tolerance is so high that they can't give you anything. Thank God you don't remember that, uh-uh. right? So they even yeah. he was on so many pain medications that they couldn't s- stop the pain, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So they had to put him back under yeah. into like a like with a the coma shit that killed state. Michael. Yeah, with the propofol. Shit that Michael, no joke. Right? What's it called? Yeah. Propofol. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. yeah. So, <clears throat> and this literally happened every time that he had to have the surgery, and by the third one. I remember this was heartbreaking. I remember. I, I remember you being. I remember. Yeah, that. I remember they they instantly wheeled him in after the after the second compound fracture of the bone, and when we we're having so much problems, and it, he was just in so much pain. And before they wheeled him in, you know, I was with him, and he. I remember him saying, "Brian, make sure, please tell them to to um, have the pain have the the drips uh, ready as soon as I come out, because they wouldn't put him on the micro drip for the fentanyl as soon as he would come out, and because of that." It, he wouldn't have the pain stuff going. So we told him, you have, if you don't have him on the, the micro drip from the fentanyl, as soon as he comes out, you're not going to be able to calm him down. And so he was pleading with me because he already pleaded with them and he knew they weren't going to do it. So he Yeah, was that's pleading. when they were like cracking down. Yeah, they're so, like, no. Yeah, he was pleading with me to please, Brian, make sure they do it. And I was heartbroken. So when he comes out of the surgery, there, I'm, I'm sitting there holding his hand and he's coming up and... He starts like, like not screaming, but he was pleading with them, and he was crying at the same time and looking at me like, Brian, you gotta tell them, please. Oh yeah, please. they also gave me. Remember, that's when they, so gave, they me, gave me ketamine. They gave me ketamine for, during the surgery, so I came out of it just bonkers, dude. And Freaking the ketamine just, scared crying. the shit out of them. Put yeah. them in a state of pure yeah. panic. They use it as a um, and and put you to sleep. I'm so glad my mom and dad weren't there. Because it would have broke my mom's heart to hear the, how he was saying, what he was saying to me, and just pleading with me to get them to do something different, and they wouldn't do it. 
And I'm so glad my mom wasn't there. And that's, I, I think one of the good things about the show is to also maybe help people who are maybe dealing uh, with the family. Jeez. Yeah. The family unit, ways to, my mom was my, you know, what do you call the nurse at home? I mean, she was my t- caretaker. Yeah. You know how hard that would be. Yeah. It was, I mean, I, I, I bet your dad, you know, I mean, dude, she was, she's my angel, man. Like it's, it, that was, there was a lot of angels that, that helped you at that there's, time. There's dude. That's what I'm saying. Like you can be positive. Yes. Like you saying, I don't know if I could dude. everybody in your life is just, it's all love, dude. Like everybody that's there, they're the ones who really care about, you, you know, you know, like you guys showing up, like my friends showing up that I've known for years. It's love, dude. And you get so much support. Like, I mean, it sounds stupid, but like online, like people would seriously be like, Hey, how are you? Mm-hmm. How are you doing? That's good. You brought this online stuff. Another thing that happened was, oh. the, was the online stuff. And sometimes we talk bad about online, but people coming out of the word works that you never even met that would just, um, <clears throat> at the time I had become a, a member, um, uh, for all the P- the CBSI members and, um, fans of the flip side and stuff uh thank you know hope hopefully you're listening to this thank you to you guys because this this goes yeah. to show you they what a too. community an online community is yeah. because at the time i had just joined this online community um called comic book speculation investing on g plus and it was just a place where people who were ma- trying to make money you know selling comic books and stuff like that flipping comic books would get ideas and stuff and the guy who created this page <laughs> uh, this g plus community um Trey Kenyon is a uh, big shout out to Trey and, and, you know, the guys over there, um, especially the guys at uh, Unpressable Defects, Sean Leggett, Mel V, Coy. Um, there, there's so many people that I, w- I want to name and you guys know who you are, but the, the Christmas after Chris got diagnosed, which was like a couple months later, um, I was supposed to send some books off to Trey Kenyon, who who was the creator of Comic Book Specialties Investigating, to have him look at him to go send to get graded and make some money off of him, and help me make him some money off of him. And he, I didn't get him out to him because we were dealing with the the onset. And Trey contacted me like three days before Christmas. I was like, "Hey man, I haven't got your package. I just want to make sure it didn't get you know lost or something." And I was like, "Sorry man, I uh, I didn't send it out. I've got something going on at home that's kind of." T-. And he goes. You know, I don't mean to to pry, but is everything okay? And I was just like, I was, we were all just kind of, you know, just like, ugh, you know? So I was like, my brother just got diagnosed with cancer and, you know, we're we're just dealing with it. And instantly he goes, is there anything I can do to help? He goes, I know you told me he was a comic fan. Can we put together a box of trade paperbacks to send him for free so he has stuff that can get his mind off the chemo and this and that? And I was just blown away because I had never met Trey face to face. And all these people I'd never met face to face. I had just known them on the on the community, right? And and the next day Trey hits me up and he goes, Hey, we're gonna have a um we're gonna have a a raffle or a uh, a money uh what are they? I'm blanking on this. This is GoFundMe. Uh, GoFundMe, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna want to raise some money for Chris. And this wasn't the Go- only GoFundMe. Yeah, that we'll, we'll, did yeah, we'll get into that. So he had a GoFundMe that another friend created for him, which this is amazing. This guy that I worked with, his name was Mike. Mike yeah. Bowman. So shout out to Mike. Shout out to Mike. He just did it, like, so, he just did it out of nowhere. Like it, it was just. This is what I'm crazy. talking about. Yeah. The online community, like so, so many people reach out, and it's going on like that now. Like by, I was talking about my uh, the the girl I know, her dad. He's got a GoFundMe, and it's like the. It's, well, that's why I want to explain. So Trey says, we're going to have this raffle and where people are going to donate books and we're going to have a raffle and we're going to donate these books. And they were donating books like $2,000 books, <clears throat> $1,500 books. These books that are like people's like holy grails of their collection. I, they gave me like an X-Men number four or something like that, uh, right? They, they they did amazing. And, and in four days, they they put a, a deposit in his GoFundMe account for like two grand. Damn. Damn. Yeah. And this is well, people that have <coughs> never even met me. Never even met never me. Never even talked to Chris. Wow. Know. And yeah. this is this is why it's so important <clears throat> that the word community, yeah. whether it's your community of your neighborhood, where it's the community of your friends, where it's the community of your online comic book Who was that again groups. to give him a shout out? Yeah, CBSI, uh, Comic Book Speculation Investing. Um, is that a podcast you're on too? Well, yeah, yeah. So, aren't uh, you on that? No, I went on it once. Oh, uh, yeah, yes. Yeah, so. You're on so many podcasts, I don't even know. So, <laughs> but um, 
the 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 comic book speculation investing they're now comicbookinvest.com trey's got a podcast called comic book wars um check out trey's podcast comic book wars cbsi's got a podcast called um unpressable or uh tales from the flip side of that i'm on and then the rest of the guys have a podcast called unpressable defects so that's the that's yeah. when you look in the camera though. yeah nice yeah, yeah so <laughs> <laughs> so anyways community we have the, these these are the community is such a major word and a major thing i didn't know that fucking that happened that's amazing yeah. dude holy yeah, do you shit you remember mike Bow bowman from st yeah no i know i remember i saw that go fund me yeah that's yeah. crazy so that's that's so important that love aspect that positive karma well, you know that... another thing that you're not talking about is you, dude. You were there for him, man. Yeah. You're oh, yeah. brother, bro. We've talked about like, me, him, everyone else, but my mom, constant, fucking Brian. My constant you battle. You had a huge fucking role, man. Yeah, my constant. It's great. Like, this is going to sound. I, I, I can not imagine topic. having Brian McClay as an older brother. And yeah, I mean, it just, you are like my you older brother. Me, but... Like, like I, 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 I never ate the hospital food that place you know it, you, you think mayo clinic you're like yeah you know scottsdale top of i actually like not what they bring you but i like the cafeteria the cafeteria is great but what the they bring cheese me, dude Ooh. my first night there at a sloppy joe that's what they that's, they bring you the same stuff as the no cafeteria. they don't <laughs> no they bring oh. you the no, stuff they that don't. they mass produce for the uh, rest of the hospital that's very true so like brian would bring me dinner every night you know like whatever i asked for whatever yeah, he'd, be he'd like, go out that. to Mesa get his yeah. favorite barbecue. He, he, he'd get yeah, he'd go out to Chandler and get me barbecue. And he lives in um, you know Peoria, and it's just you send your brother all that way, bro. He he would <laughs> he would do it like like here, like a surprise. I'm just I wouldn't send him. No, I'd be like, dude, give me some uh, give me some Wendy's, you know, spicy crispy <laughs> or you know. Some t even worse food. My uh, mom did that too when she'd be at the chemo. She'd always want like Wendy's or something. Yeah, it's you know? comfort food, man. Fast yeah. food. Um. But yeah, I mean, my uncle Brad, he would bring me, um, he'd bring me food when Brian couldn't bring me food. Um, my dad would come after working twelve hour shift, you know, as a manager. Uncle Robert was always uncle. Over. My uncle Robert, he's a great guy. Um, he goes by Bob McClay. He's actually on um, KTAR. KTAR. He's a you know news guy. Um, he's he's like he's like the most I'd say like religious guy in our family. You yeah. know, very Christian. Very he's good person. Great guy, and he just show up like out of nowhere, and he like. Um, sit and watch a he, baseball he, game. With he you. just sit there and watch a baseball game. That's all you need. Yep. He just show up out of nowhere, and it was just like, wow, man. That's yeah. It. It, 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 as bad as it sounds, dude, it brought the family together. We didn't talk to my aunt and uncle, or my mom didn't talk to my aunt and uncle for probably a couple of years. And when I found out I had cancer, I called my aunt and uncle, and it brought my yeah my because, mom's brother back yeah. in her life, dude. The cancer, yeah. like. It's it's a crazy experience. It life altering. That's one another thing. Like it, I'm so much more humble. Like I'm trying to be more humble now, you know, and not be a freaking arrogant jerk. It just it just brings you. I, I don't know, man. It's a crazy. So for anyone else, some people that's, say um, like it, <clears throat> it, it, like the spirit it, like it had to happen to you. It's part of your journey. I'm like fuck, really. And and like after it happened, I was like, that oh, makes yeah. sense. Sixty one minutes. Uh oh. Oh no, we're getting. So we got what? Fifteen minutes. Yeah. Um. Yeah, we had about 30, 15. thirty-five minutes. Okay. An we hour, have 15? an hour and a half, right? Is our no, we're at seventy-five now. So take fifteen. So, minutes, so yeah. fifteen minutes we have. But yeah, it definitely made me um appreciate. I have fifty-five minutes left. Yeah. We have fifteen. No, we have fifteen. We're yeah, good at fifteen yeah. more. Yeah. Um, just really quick. So um, <clears throat> Damn, say someone someone got diagnosed with cancer today. What kind of advice would you give someone that? That do you, you could tell you, them that you went research. through. I mean, do your research. I'd say, dude, I'd say, it's definitely go to Mayo Clinic. I mean, <clears throat> I can. I went to other hospitals when I was going through stuff because I had emergencies. Mayo Clinic takes it really does. I mean, it's still the bureaucratic bullshit where you got to sit around. But once you're in there, the the rooms are like nice. Like the staff, it's on well, I've been par. There. My dad goes there for hard shit. You know, um, if you're in the, you know, go to Mayo Clinic. If there's one the near one you. The one on uh, Tatum? The one on Tatum, yeah. Yeah, my dad goes, that place is awesome. Yes. I know, it's my, amazing. my dad goes there for it, it, I everything. mean, and if you're listening in another country, you know, check out the American Cancer Society. Just, just don't go to, you know, go to a normal hospital if you want to. Um, other things I would say is definitely check out medical marijuana, turmeric, um, spices, natural oils. You know, do the chemo, but. Support also. You know, and support, yeah, you got to have, I, I don't think a lot of people, I think the family's going to come together. They yeah, have, you know? But some people don't have the blood family, so the, the friends, <clears throat> people don't think about this, but 
It affects the friends, family and friends so much. Like, mm-hmm. and friends are uh, so many friends. Like, they are family. You know what I mean? Like, even before all this, like when we lost you, our, you guys were family to yeah. us. Oh yeah. You know, um, th- there's people that I've been around since I was eight years old, or you know what I mean? It's like there's people that have been, you know, thirty years of of friendship. At that point, you guys, we're family. Yeah, I knew, I knew so, your friend Chris Blanzi. I've known him since I was what three, four. Yeah. So you know? it, that is the also the important thing that they have a support system. And if you are that person, be that support system. Yeah. Be that support system and do everything you can to but be do your, positive and make them feel positive because that goes such a long way. Yeah. On another, like, seriously, like if, if you come down with cancer, seriously, the good, that the good attitude will, you know, d- don't think the worst. Because sometimes when you think the worst, the worst happens, you know. I was very, very um, positive during that. And uh, I was definitely more spiritual. Like I like I said earlier, you know, tried to put out what, you know, I thought I'd get back. And uh, and you will become more positive for sure. Like you won't, you're not going to be like, oh. yeah. you kind of have to. If you want to survive, if you don't. If you're like whatever cool <clears throat> done and that's okay i mean i hate that's to say okay that. too that's yeah okay too like dude I mean, if, like i know people like i've heard stories of people getting it four or five times you know it's hard when, you, it's when it's the hard. fifth time you're just like oh, i accept it but i never thought that way but do you uh are you scared that you'll get it again yes all the time <laughs> and now my friends used to call me a hypo i'm like i told you bro like i'm not a hypo that shit was real <laughs> Is there? Do you change your life now to start to prevent like with food? And I, I things don't. Like that, I don't or? eat as much sugar. Um, <clears throat> sugar is the number one cause of inflammation, and inflammation For is sure. the number one cause of cancer. Mm-hmm. That's what people don't. A lot of people don't know. So I stay away from the sugar. I mean, sugar is just poison. And you know what the <laughs> the bad thing was? Is I was eating tons of sugar candy when I was getting the chemo. I didn't know better. It, well, you, know? you had to be comf- You had to be happy at that. Yeah, point. yeah. And it, it's all you. about it's all about making you comfortable. Yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, that's what that's what li- living with cancer is. That's what the nurses are there for and everything. Um, yeah, I, I freak out. That's why I'm kind of like. I, I want to ask you something um, before we before we call it a wrap. Is what do you? Sometimes you'll talk to me about how you think you got it. Oh yeah. What are some of your thoughts <clears throat> on how you think you got it? Well, I worked at a a microchip factory for a while, uh, semiconductor industry. Don't and say their name. I won't. <clears throat> and uh, <laughs> I worked. What, in a, what area did you? Work I worked in, in an area where it's called photo. And what they had is, um, they had this chemical called photo resist, and it was basically throughout the whole department I worked in. Like if when people from other departments come in, they'd be like, "Dude, what's that smell?" I'd be like, "Oh, I don't smell anything." And they'd just say it was terrible. Oh, I know what you're talking about. So that photo resist was just everywhere. It just came out of the machines and you used to handle it and stuff. And uh, that may have done it. Um, I was around a lot of chemicals, and then <laughs> when I moved down, I moved into a different area at that place. I worked down in what they called the basement <clears throat> with three other people, and I used to like go to work and crash out in the uh, <laughs> in the chemical room where they kept all the chemicals, which is dumb as shit. It's like some Marvel shit. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, so I was around a lot of chemicals. I think that may be a reason why. Yeah. But instead of like becoming a superhero, you got cancer. Well, maybe. Uh, but you, you know what? You became, you became a superhero with Oh, this, my, my cell phone. No shit, right? I carry my cell phone. Everybody does that, though. I know. But if they come out with... You but, know, where, but he carried it in, in I the same it, pocket. I carry, it in, I carry mine in my same pocket every that's day. Exactly that's where exactly got where it. I got it. <clears throat> I know, but... I know everybody does, but <clears throat> if they say, like, yeah, they're right. I'm know, not saying that's people not talk why, about cell phones causing brain tumors. tumors. I think... I'm not saying cell phones don't do that. I'm just saying every human being has their cell phone Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah, yeah. You guys yeah. think uh, microphones or podcast headphones cause tumors? I hope not. I think I don't you think, do. I don't, well, as long as you're not doing like Blu-ray. Uba does. Blu-ray? Tumors. What do you mean? I mean uh, bl- uh, Bluetooth. Bluetooth. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Maybe yeah. I don't know. Maybe Bluetooth. Did you know Bluetooth came from an uh, not an Ireland but like a Viking. A, a Viking, and he was Harold Bluetooth. Harold Bluetooth. St. Um, were the first people to make the Bluetooth microchips. You S- know that? Oh, who? Who? Oh, Jesus. <laughs> I'm definitely editing that part out. Way to go, Bob. Fuck. That was a good segment, too. I kind of... Motherfucker. <laughs> Start the Just episode the... over for take four. So we have how many? How much longer do we have? We got about uh, six, seven minutes. So I just have a few more questions. Um, kind of off topic. 
<clears throat> of the cancer, but I wanted to know what it was like growing up with Brian McClay. It was pretty cool. I mean, so uh, like, was he the um, asshole brother? He's no, like, no, his friends were the his friends were the assholes. Like who? Oh, uh, I don't. Keith. You know. No, no, no. I wasn't mean to him. I, I mean, you know, like I don't want to say their names, but you know who they are. The ones who grew up in Todd. A, the run who no Todd was cool. David. I, you know, I, don't think, I don't think any of my friends were really assholes. They were, you know, they were, were an assholes, but they were the kid like when you show up, they punch you in your arm. And oh, Brian, Balanzia. Brian was that. Big deal. Brian was that, Balanzia, you know, like older right? brother Big stuff. Big deal. It was older brother stuff, but it was cool. I mean, we used to we had a great childhood. We had all the cool freaking toys, GI Joes and Ninja Turtles, her, uh, Legos and He Man and Star Wars. And then we had. Well, you lived in Bel Air. Right? Yeah, we lived. Well, so... we lived on the outer <laughs> outskirts. We That's were the like best the, part. Yeah. Bella. Everyone Bel Air had, had those toys. We had Nintendo, we had Genesis, we had Super, we had all the great games. And... I was in Cherry Hills. We only had like one of, I only had G.I. Joe's. That was it. Well, you know, the biggest thing for me, like honestly, like Brian, like my biggest, uh, is being with him like, and being around the music that he listened to. Like if I wasn't around Brian, I wouldn't be into music like I am today. I, yeah. I bet you that for sure, you know. Like he was me and my friends, like uh, influence on what bands were, that, that we would just get new music from, you know, was Brian. And what about drugs? You know, he never really, he never really did him around me. I was kind of sheltered from him. I mean, I, I saw him smoke pot maybe like, probably like a dozen Ooh, times, maybe. How old? You know, I mean, this was when I was in high school. I mean, he really didn't party around me. I really didn't know that side of him until I got like older. Yeah. yeah that's, that, that's probably good. I remember the first time I got stoned though was with him. Nice. Because he's like, you can't get stoned if you're, if you're not with me. And I was like, all right, man. And the first thing he had was that ATF. Alaskan, Alaskan bunga, their fight, yeah. yeah. I didn't know what was going on. It was great. We used to all chip in five dollars, eat a gram. Oh yeah, yeah. Shit. Well, I did that in high school too. Yeah, I, I was a late bloomer though. I started, but yeah, I really don't mess with weed. I I do the um, CBD now, but I don't I don't really get high that much. But the CBD has THC in it, doesn't it? No, it, no. Oh, no. it's just CBD. Yeah, yeah. it's just yeah. CBD. Oh. Yeah. Well, it works better with THC. Yeah, but yeah, I don't like the psycho stuff. Hmm. I like I like the cream too. Cream helps with like my knee. I see you using a lot of the droppers on your oh, tongue. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. The those CBD are awesome. Yeah. And they, they, those just help you sleep and just they just chilling out, yeah. just being normal, yeah. and it helps with pain. So yeah. that's cool. You should get um, like a mechanical leg tattooed right here on you. Oh, jeez, I have the scar right there. It's a pretty wicked scar. I'm, I'm thinking of like, I kind of put it like Donkey Kong, like climbing <laughs> up and down, because it looks like two, it looks like two bars right here. You know, just have them. I got something funny to say real quick. I remember when he first got diagnosed and they were talking about, you know, cutting his leg off at the hip. Oh, yeah. And he had just gotten, uh, so he has a, a buddy that um, is an amazing tattoo artist, uh, Jason Freeling out at- Shout uh, out Goliath Tattoo. Yeah, Goliath Tattoo. Check it out. Um, really, really good crew out there. And, and he's an amazing artist, um, painting uh, everything oil else. Paintings, and, yeah, oil paintings, yeah. Oil paintings, very good. Just, uh, check him out. And he had did a really good uh, uh, Michael Myers on one, on one side of my calf, and then a badass Freddy Krueger on the other side of the same calf. And the doctor's like, "We might have to cut off your leg." I was like, "It's cool if I keep my calf." And they're like, "What?" <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, "I just got it done." <laughs> that could so have been he's you know, yeah. skin them and put so it for in just them. a hot second. You had the doc thinking he would have to put this part of your leg right here. No, no. <laughs> I thought I was gonna have to do like, yeah. Is that what? I, I'm pretty sure he was like, what? No, no, I was like, let me keep my leg. I want to frame my leg, you know. Put it up on a pedestal and shit. Yeah, be dope. So, what's the plans for the future from here on out, man? What do you got going on? You know, right now, um, uh, I, I still really haven't recovered physically. Um, like I can't. You know, I'm used to working in like factories and doing manufacturing. So, I mean, I I want to go back to work. I just can't. Yeah. Like, me being on my feet, my feet straight up for like an hour straight, like I can't Not walk happening. for like the next day. It's like it's it's tough. So right now, um, um, I'm going to school. I went back to community college. I'm doing uh, just music classes and stuff. I'm doing music theory and piano. <clears throat> I was gonna ask you about that about the music. Oh, it's going great, dude. Freaking just had my midterm. Freaking aced it. What about writing and stuff? Writing, yeah. Oh, uh, since I moved back in with Brian, um. I have my setup in my room. I have a. I just bought a new PC. I spent like five thousand dollars on a new setup. I just got. Damn. I just got dope ass monitor, speakers, um, a really nice sub. I spent like fifteen hundred on soft, on hardware, and then another, like, two thousand on software for writing music. So you're so, at Brian's house. So I'm at Brian's house and I write every day. Nice, yeah. dude. That's yeah. badass. Yeah. What? Uh, so are you gonna put an album out or? 
I, I'm right now. I'm just trying to get back in the swing of things. I mean, I didn't mess with music probably like five years because of all the cancer and bullshit and the drugs. And yeah. I, I just had no inspiration. Like I should have been writing that whole time. I, had, I was sick, you know, but I was just so out of it. I couldn't. So I'm just getting my shit back together. I want to start. Um, yeah, I want to put out a, you know, like a lot of guitar and keyboards and or what. Well, um, I'm gonna try to mix everything because I got an interface where I can play guitar, I can plug it into my computer. Um, I'm doing like I'm messing around with like a lot of like club bangers right now, like guitars are so 2000s, bro. But no, I'm gonna put in some cool because like I have a a bunch of uh, uh, guitar software too in there, you know, with a bunch of amps, simulators, and stuff. So I'm definitely gonna put that over the songs if when yeah. I can. Because how many how many of your how many of your songs just come from you dicking around on oh, a guitar? For sure. And you just Sometimes put that into uh, me. Sometimes fun to write keyboard parts on the guitar. Yeah, right. exactly. What about um, Fate of the Galaxies? What's up with that? We've got Jeez. two members, two of the three members in the house right now. <laughs> That's true, I, mean, I know. Manny, you guys, you, you, Manny, you Manny needs to come over. Oh, I don't know, man. Do you guys want to ever talk about that? No. We haven't really. Is, are you guys a group or what? What's going on with that? I don't, know. Fate, I don't think. I don't know. Well, Fate's always been around, but I mean. I came in. about as I far as like Chris has ever been out of the band. I don't think we've ever considered. Yeah, that. yeah, they're always like, "Hey, come out!" Oh, I know. You know. Yeah, I just no, didn't know. Cancer kind of happened. happened. I didn't know if we've, you guys were ever going to do we've anything. We've always or... said that there's always been three members in Fade. Yeah, yeah. Chris was going to. No, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, no, yeah, yeah, for sure. So and that was that's... really. I got to tell you something. Oops, that was really cool. That really for our whole family. Um, you guys did that a lot. You guys oh, yeah. did a lot of stuff over over um, social media, and you would. You guys would always kind of say that, and uh, that was something that we uh, we definitely saw. Well, I mean, you cool, and Manny man. were there all the yeah. time, oh, yeah, you know. Yeah. yeah, that was awesome. Yeah, you know, we would still pick and poke at him as he was our little I know. brother. He's yeah. like, they'd, I'd, they'd be like, I'd be like in chemo, and they'd be talking, "Are you writing, bro? You got your <laughs> you got your MacBook you there, got that dude? Song down and yeah. shit. Yeah. What the fuck? Right? You've been you practicing? The, yeah, yeah. You remember <laughs> your parts, bro? We're doing yeah. a gig in like three weeks. <laughs> 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 For real. That's yeah. yeah, Manny's every time. Yeah, he's still yeah. Every time you guys play, Manny gives me a shout out. He's like, "If you want to come down, dude, yeah, all of... you're more than welcome to." Yeah, I would love to see you guys uh, jam out live again. That'd be awesome. Yeah, that would yeah. be fun, man. It's a lot of work. What, what do you got? On your, what, Being what, in a band what, sucks. You can sit down. <laughs> I didn't. I, know. I didn't come up with the name of the band. I'm not talking about for you. I'm talking about for you. Uh, <laughs> what, what's your shirt, man? Oh, so this is uh, a lot of people are like, dude, what is that like? Is that like a gang? Or Bunch of shapes, oh, bro. Yeah. So this is, um, and actually this is a Snake Eyes clan, like the G.I. Joe Snake Eyes, the uh, Era, Era, uh, Ar Arashikashi Ar or something like that. Arakashi, Arakashi. Yeah, something like that. I might get made fun of, but yeah, this is Snake Eyes uh, tattoo that he has right here, right? or is that Storm, Storm Shadow? Shadow yeah. Storm Shadow has this tattoo. This is the clan that Snake Eyes trained in, G.I. Joe for life. It's fucking dorks. Dude, you never had the action. To <laughs> I'm just kidding. You, did you Actually, ever have? Uh, the... Do you know what this is? That's what I was getting at to next. Yeah. What's up? With, what's up with your shirt, man? I know that that's a pretty dope shirt. This? Yeah. This is Michael Martin's um, jujitsu. Exactly. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Who? Big shout out to Strong Michael Martin. Martin. Uh, we went to high school with him. He has a uh, I, what would you call it? A jujitsu center. Yeah. BJJ. Uh, North, uh, yeah. A dojo. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Strong heart. Strong heart. These I, are I was the, really these are the baddest logo, fucking yeah. shirts. Look at this logo. Oh, that is tight. Yeah, and so, and Mike's always been a really good artist. Check out Strong Heart. Mike, yeah. we want you on the show. Yep, for so. sure. Yeah. But um, anyway, uh, so we should be. Are we think, good, right? Yeah. yeah. All right. Cool. Um, so uh, Chris, I want to say, uh, I mean, I know you haven't been on the podcast yet, but you can come over anytime you want and hang out. I mean, shit, you're, you know, McClay's little brother. So, um, <laughs> I could even, you know, use some help and shit, even if oh, you yeah. wanted to, with whatever, man. So uh, yeah, I'll become the I'll become the new Jamie if uh, Oompa, you know, when he. When he's not here, I'll, I'll try to help out. Yeah, you can look up facts and shit yeah. and um, fuck with the audio. I yeah, need someone to take over this audio, man. It's... Before Google came along. Oh, man, the audio's not working. Fuck. <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> no, I'm just playing. Okay. That would suck balls. What is it? Uh, Take four? Take four. Would you, you guys down to do another podcast? <laughs> <laughs> do that all again? Real quick, I must say, um, can I, speaking can I see of G.I. Joe, um, Tatum Channing, I want to challenge you to do a charity boxing match. Because I oh think your acting God. is horrible. You and me for charity. He's actually not a bad actor. I, don't I think, he's, think he's. I can't watch a movie with him. I think. I don't think he's that bad. I mean, he has a bunch of cheesy bad movies that he's done. But anyway, thank you, Channing Tatum. Just, you can come on anytime you want, and he. <laughs> I still can, respect him. I okay, but I'm just saying. Shout out. To you know, let's get this out of the way really quick. Every day you have a different celebrity that you want to box. Let's get like five of them. 
Get the camera on this. When's guy. the last time you were uh, you sparred or did? Wait, yeah, when's the last shit? time you've actually boxed? Yeah, yeah. I've seen. I, I, you know I, what? I remember you or mentally? Let's, no, let's be honest here. I remember Channing you Tatum a... would whoop your ass, bro. <laughs> yeah, you would get your ass whooped. Yeah. Channing Tatum, well, please on. fight him in a. He's like two twenty, two twenty-five. Um, has a buck seventy. Yeah, you would get. <laughs> fucked he up. might. Yeah. I would love he to might see right that. now, but give me six months to train. Like, like, like. See, he don't. That gives him an extra six months too. That's guess what? And guess what? And he won't even train, and he'll still whoop his ass. <laughs> yeah. I think you All guys are forgetting months. something. All I need well, yeah, months. tell us what? about how Oompa. Hold, hold on, hold on, hold on. You guys adapt. are forgetting the power of the tooth. Oh, <laughs> oh God! Was he gonna bite him? <laughs> he's gonna get really grossed out and run off. No, he's got he's got good like it absorbs shock better. Like with that gap there, he doesn't break. When down. a punch gets thrown at me, I just throw my teeth in front. So when they get all and cut it gets up, stuck they can't. in between. The You're gap. never gonna be more than my stunt double. <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> true, that's true that, true that. That's perfect. Tatum Channing, it's off the table. I can't do it. All right, per contract. Um, we should end, end every episode with you challenging a celebrity to a <laughs> to for real. boxing match. All right, that's episode eight of the podcast. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Chris. Yep. Thanks. Uh, cool. Very good show, guys. Bang!